All right, let's take a look once again, the deltoid muscle that takes us to the brachialis muscle that takes us to the brachioradialis muscle. Brachioradialis muscle is a flexor. It is a flexor of the forearm at the elbow, and it does not cross the wrist. It originates on the upper region of the lateral epicondyle, just above the lateral epicondyle, and will insert on the styloid process of the radius. Again, this is a flexor of the elbow. Now, this muscle will also tense during supination and pronation, so this is essentially the arm wrestling muscle. If you see somebody in arm wrestling, you'll see this pop out pretty nice. Okay, so the brachioradialis essentially marks the uh, extensor muscles for us. And so once we find this, we can start going in the back of the forearm and we'll see all these extensors. Uh, all the extensors, all, at least all the superficial extensors, are going to originate on the lateral epicondyle. So this is extensor carpi radialis longus. This is extensor carpi radialis brevis. Extensor carpi radialis longus is going to once again originate on the lateral condyle as the um, epicondyle, I should say, as well as the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Uh, extensor carpi radialis longus is going to insert on metacarpal number two, uh, whereas extensor carpi radialis brevis will insert on metacarpal number three. We come down here, right in the middle, we have extensor digitorum. Once again, in effect, originating on the lateral epicondyle, as do all the superficial extensor muscles, and it's going to travel all the way down to the fingertips, so down here to uh, the phalanges. Now, here, tucked in here, is the extensor digiti minimi. This is Dr. Evil's muscle. So I'm going to demonstrate this on, on my chin. All right, so this is the action of extensor digiti minimi. It essentially takes the little finger and extends it. And if I bring this up to my chin, you can see this is the Dr. Evil muscle. So minimi from uh, the Michael Myers films. Right. Next to it is the extensor carpi ulnaris. The extensor carpi ulnaris is going to originate once again around the lateral epicondyle and it will come down to the uh, metacarpals number five. To some degree the hamate and um, pisiform bone as well. Okay and then right here is a little helper for the triceps brachii muscle. This is the anconius. The anconius is going to originate um, on the uh, ulna and it's going to insert on the olecranon process similar to what we found with the triceps brachii. Okay spinning around let's take a look at the pronator and the supinator. So I've got this part removed we might as well take a look at it now. This is the pronator teres originating in effect on the medial epicondyle and uh, this is the supinator originating on effect on the lateral epicondyle. Both of them are going to insert in this upper region of the radius. So say again, about two thirds of the way down um, from the base of the radius. And so here we go. Um, this point of insertion is going to allow the radius to essentially rotate. And so supinator supinates, as you might guess, pronator pronates. All right, so pronator teres is right here. And if we come over here, we see our very first flexor muscle then. This is flexor carpi radialis. Flexor carpi radialis, as you might guess, is going to originate on the medial epicondyle, as well as, of course, the pronator teres. And so, and it's going to insert around the base of the uh, metacarpal number one. I'm sorry, metacarpal number two. Here we have the palmaris longus. Palmaris longus being a superficial flexor um, is going to originate on the lateral, ep I'm sorry, medial epicondyle, medial epicondyle, and it's going to come down to the palmar fascia for the insertion. This is um, flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris will originate up here at the medial epicondyle essentially and come down in effect to the fifth metacarpal. This is flexor carpi superficialis. Flexor carpi superficialis is going to lie deep to the 
prone uh, to the palmaris longus, and it's going to insert up here in the middle or intermediate um, phalanges of the hand. This will help you flex the fingers in the middle, basically. Uh, once again, because it is a superficial muscle, in effect, the point of origin will be the medial epicondyle. Now let's just remove this piece, and you see one that's going to insert all the way to the distal phalanges, and that particular one is flexor digitorum profundus. Profundus meaning profound. So it's going to originate in effect between the radius and the ulna, also taking into account the um, antibrachial interosseous membrane as a point of origin. Good. And again, this is going to flex the fingertips. Um, not very many people can do that, but it will flex the fingertips. Usually you have to flex both of uh, these joints in order to do this, unless you're double jointed. All right, good. Let's spin around here. We have just a few more muscles to take a look at. This is the abductor longus. Abductor longus is going to originate on the diaphysis of the humerus, and it's going to come back around here all the way, distal part of the carpals to the base of metacarpal number one, right here. And as the name implies, this is going to be an abductor muscle of the thumb. This is your hitchhiking muscle. Next to it is a muscle that has a tendon that travels all the way to the distal end of the thumb. And this is going to be extensor carpi radialis brevis. So this helps to extend the thumb. Again, this is going to originate on the upper regions of the ulna. And then having a very, very long tendon is his little buddy right here. This is extensor carpi radialis longus, traveling all the way to the distal region of the thumb once again. Now, when we name muscles longus and brevis, we name them not by the size of the muscle, but rather by the length of the tendon. And so you can see the tendon for brevis starts right over here, whereas longus is actually going to travel a long distance, even underneath the extensor digitorum longus muscles here, or I should say just extensor digitorum right here. So if we were to take a look at these with the extensor muscles removed, we see abductor pollicis longus, we see extensor pollicis brevis, and we see extensor pollicis longus. If we take this apart here, you can see a ductor longus coming all the way down here, essentially toward the ulna 